Next up, you're going to meet an artist who practices what may be the ultimate in recycling. Her name is Sharon Eckert. Teresa Bush went to meet her in her home in Cumberland County. Now, Sharon makes some decorative, extraordinary baskets out of plain, ordinary pine needles. The hardest thing is starting your project because the needles will flop around for a while. There are two sides to the needle. There is a round side, which is very smooth, and then there is a rough side. To make a perfect item that would be museum quality, you would want to see more of the smooth side. Sharon Eckert may not have her work in a museum yet, still she works as if every piece will be on permanent display for all the world to see. Sharon, a retired teacher from Indiana, didn't know the first thing about making baskets out of long pine needles and raffia. That is, until she and her husband Tom moved to Cumberland County back in 1995 to live at the Uplands Retirement Village in Pleasant Hill. And that's when she met Elizabeth McCutcheon. Here at Uplands, there was a resident who did this, and I saw some of them in her house and on her walls. It just looked unique. I had never seen anything like that before, and I just thought that I'd like to learn that. I was able to go to her house every Monday night for over a year and a half, sit with her, and she taught me how to do this. When Sharon asked Elizabeth to teach her, she had no idea she could no longer make the baskets. Elizabeth's hands were just worn out. Elizabeth couldn't demonstrate the ancient technique of coiling 12 to 15 inch long needles and securing them tightly with raffia, but she could talk, and Sharon soaked in every word. I miss her, she has died now, and there are times that I get to a point or I wanna do something with the pine needle baskets and I don't have her to ask, and so I, I do miss that. What are some of the main things you believe that you've learned from her? I remember her always saying that the front has to look as good as the back, and the back has to look as good as the front. And I have an example of one that is not like that, that <laughs> I keep, so that I'm reminding myself that, that that is part of Elizabeth's process. Sharon says Elizabeth was a very traditional basket maker, using only the needles and raffia. And given the amount of time it takes to prepare the raffia, which can be hours, because the plant has to be soaked in water, then straightened and cut to various widths. You'd think she would have embraced synthetic thread. Well, she didn't. And you never saw Elizabeth use shellac to preserve her work. Over the years, Sharon has ventured away from the very traditional way of making a basket that Elizabeth taught her. You might say she's added a little bling, making them with things such as gourds and even mirrors. There are a couple of them, yes, that I'm very happy with and very, very proud of, yes. I also developed the mirrors. I had not seen mirrors done by anyone, and to start with a ring and then to make a border for the mirror and then to put a mirror in it is a fun thing to do. Many of the things with raffia centers become just novelties. They become very decorative and very, very model-like and uh, very fancy. Sometimes they just come. It, it, the pine needles, when you're working with them, seem to have a life of their own. And you start out with an idea, you start out with, with something that you think is going to be a certain bowl or a certain shape, and as you're working on it, it just seems to evolve into something different. Pine needles are kind of ordinary, and, and sometimes when people look at them, they just kind of turn up their nose and say, oh, you made that out of pine needles, you know, they're just on the ground, or I have some of those in my yard. And so it, it's kind of a look down upon because it's so common at that particular point. But to really turn it into something that is um, creative and beautiful and to uh, dress it up in some way is uh, really kind of exciting.
For Sharon, it can evolve into a precious piece of art, a frame for a mirror, a decoration on a gourd, a bowl, even a coaster. The list is as endless as your imagination. So the next time you see a pile of pine needles, stop for a moment and think of Sharon and what she can do with something we often think of as just plain useless.